Hi friends, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the MCAT as you saw from today's title. As somebody who went from 487 to 508, I'm not sitting here with a 528 and telling you how to get a perfect exam, but I did get into medical school, so I am sitting here knowing how to get a good enough score to get into medical school, which is the goal. And I wanted to talk to you guys about small ways and also study strategies that help you get over the hump. If you're doing practice exams and one after another you're not improving or you're not where you want to be, there's something that you're doing wrong. So I wanted to give you some methods and some tips on how to get over that hump. Before we start today's video, I wanted to say I'm sponsored by UWorld in today's video, which is super exciting. Anybody that studies for the MCAT knows about UWorld, if not uses UWorld. So a new thing that they're doing is a comprehensive MCAT course. And although I didn't use this, I could see how it's really beneficial. The format of the website's really easy. So I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about it. The most important thing about this is it's self-study. It's based off your schedule. So it takes the stress out of scheduling your own time. They actually do it for you. So you go through and you put the days of the week that you want to study, the hours you want to study, how much time you have till your exam. It tells you how much time you need to complete everything in the course. We're going to go into the different things that they have in the course. So one of the major things is the AMC UWorld question bank problems. I actually paid for the UWorld subscription that you get three months of all of the 3,000 questions and I genuinely feel like the explanations, the way that it's formatted, everything really, really helped me to prepare for the MCAT and the questions and the critical thinking. So you'll have access to all 3,000 of those questions and honestly, I really, really recommend that you at least get the 3,000 questions for your MCAT study because I am not kidding, the explanations are literally life-changing and help you understand the concept so much more. The next thing that's in this prep course is interactive U books. They have six science books and two cars books. These are just to help you integrate the questions in with the actual learning. So not only that, the next part of the course is they actually have these videos that help to visually represent what you just read, to help you understand concepts in a different way. I'm a visual learner, so this is a different way to see the information and also to give you as many resources as you can to understand the concepts. The next thing that they have in this course is flashcard quizzes. So they curate these flashcards for you and they're also spaced repetition so that it reinforces the stuff that you, you need to know. And I think that that's kind of like a supplement for Anki or a supplement for Quizlet. So it's embedding all of the things that people usually use for MCAT study all into one platform which I think is really interesting and could be very, very useful. It also tracks your performance so you can see how you're doing, see where your weaknesses are, where your strengths are, and it's also gonna show you what needs more focus. What do you need to focus on more? And lastly, like I said in the beginning, you get to customize your study plan. It gives you a flexible schedule so that you can study as much as you can within your schedule. Some people work full time, some people are in school, some people aren't doing anything. So it just is personalizable. And I think that's good because everybody studying for the MCAT is in a different place. And it's important to not just do one study plan for everybody because it's not one size fits all. So with that being said, thank you UWorld for sponsoring this video. They also have the A AMC practice tests within them and you can actually track your scores through the website so it just really brings everything together. You don't have to make Excel sheets to track your scores. You can just keep everything in this UWorld platform and I think that that's really nice and I probably would have invested in it if it would have been out whenever I was studying. But if you guys have the opportunity and are interested, UWorld is a very, very credible, awesome company that really helped me with my MCAT studying. So with that being said, we're going to go into the video. But if you want more information, I will put links down below for the UWorld prep course. <sighs> I'm sweating, guys. Okay, we're just going to jump right into the MCAT, how to improve your score. I actually made this for one of my friends and was like, this is a perfect outline for a YouTube video. So we're just going to dive right in. The first thing that I said is if you don't review your exams and practice questions, studying is pretty much pointless because if you're not finding a way to reinforce and to understand what you did wrong, that is the biggest problem with your MCAT studying. I could tell you that if you're not reviewing anything you're doing, that's why you're doing bad. 
bad as in your own standard of bad. You have to look at every explanation to everything. So you have to look at things you did right, things you did wrong. You could be a lucky guesser. You need to go through every practice question, every practice exam question. You need to see why is the right answer the right answer? Why is the wrong answer the wrong answer? So I wanted to preface with that because that is the most important thing for studying. If you don't know what you're doing wrong, you don't know what you're doing wrong. Point blank period. Something I would say also is you need to have a piece of paper, a Google note, doc, something to keep track of big concepts you've never heard of, you're not doing well in, you don't know. So every time I encountered a question, a practice exam question, a UWorld question, and I have never heard of the pathway, for example, the pentose phosphate pathway. I think I knew kind of what it was, but I didn't really know. That would go on my list, and I would dedicate days to study this list because you can't just go on with your day and pretend like that doesn't matter. If you're tested on it, it means that you could be tested on it for the actual MCAT. So you need to take everything you don't know seriously, and you also need to keep track of it. So I really, really recommend keeping a piece of paper, keeping some to take notes on stuff you don't know. And also, last thing I'll say before getting into the tips is you need to have a schedule that works for you, just like we talked about the U World schedule, but have certain days be practice questions, certain days be reviewing the list. You need to take time to do the questions, but you also need to take time to review. If you need to make Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, practice questions, then you need to make Thursday, Friday review. Or if you wanna do like the first half of your study session, you do practice questions, the last half you review, there needs to be a schedule for you to do both. Because if you're not doing both, you're wasting time. And I know that sucks because especially if you've put months into the study, you're seeing no progress, it's okay to change up things. You didn't know, now you know. So now you just have to adjust. So with that being said, I'm like literally sweating. Here are actual things that like I did that improved my score so much. So if you're studying for the MCAT, you know how much, how much vocab, how many pathways that are so hard to memorize. Like what even are these words? What, like I literally can't think of a way to memorize them. That's when you need to go to Reddit mnemonics. So I will actually put the link down below and put Reddit mnemonics in the description. If you go to this thread, people input all of their favorite mnemonics. Some of them are from the Kaplan books and the sides. If you had the Kaplan books, it'll say like mnemonic. But some of these are ones that people have made up that has helped them but are really useful. So if you, if you go into the biochemistry section with 10 new mnemonics memorized, I promise you, you will at least get five to 10 questions right. Because a lot of this is just seeing if you know. So we need to go on that new mnemonics page and we need to pick out our favorites, memorize them, put them on a piece of paper, regularly review them because when you can memorize something that easily, oh my gosh, it helps so much. So that's an easy way. I put that one as number one because you can really improve your score by memorizing some of these, especially for biochemistry and for psychology. Sorry, I had to lose the thing. It's like literally so hot in here. So the next thing is for psychology specifically, and I know that not everybody likes to use Anki. I truly, truly, truly recommend using it for this section, just for psychology alone. I will put down below the Jack Sparrow deck that you download to Anki. Go to psychology. All of these cards are so beneficial because psychology is just memorization, and they use a lot of graphics in the Anki cards to make you remember kind of like mnemonics and stuff like that. That is the best, easiest way to improve your psychology score. I actually had the best section score in psychology, so I really accredit it to this Jack Sparrow Psychology Anki deck. That's all I can say about psychology. For biochemistry, I think really the only thing that you can do is find mnemonics, rewrite diagrams constantly, and find a good YouTube channel to help you understand the pathway because you don't just need to memorize the pathway, you need to understand it. You need to understand why one pathway feeds into another pathway, what activates, what inhibits, all that kind of stuff. My favorite YouTube channel was Metacosis Perfectialis. I will put it on the screen. I will link it down below. It helped me tremendously. He does have a premium subscription where he shows more biochemistry pathways. 
I paid for it because it was that helpful. So you may find somebody that you don't have to pay for, but I felt like the speed that which he talks, the way he reinforces, I felt like it was so beneficial to me. So that's my recommendation. Next thing is physics and other equation-based studies. So I will actually link down below a Reddit thread of somebody who kept track of all the equations that you may need in chemistry or physics, and you can actually look and review, but what I would recommend is you already took physics, you already took chemistry, there's some that are just in your brain, you don't need to re-memorize, but I would go through that list and I would look at all the ones that you really, really need to memorize, and every single day, every single day that you remember, you need to start with a blank piece of paper and try to write all the ones that you can down from memory, because during the MCAT you need to be able to recall the equations as if you had no cue for it. Next is cars. A lot of people know that for cars it kind of is what it is, but I will link down below two videos of people who scored really well in the car section and their tips, but my pre-med advisor told me that the earlier that you can start reading and analyzing things, the better. So even if you aren't studying for the MCAT for like a year, really try to start reading, try to start reading scientific newspapers, scientific articles, and really reading dense stuff because that's what's on the MCAT. But then if you're studying for the MCAT, start early on your car stuff. It's something that only gets better with time. It's not like a quick fix. So I will link down below a few videos that people who know what they're doing talked about what you should do. For chemistry, I also used the Jack Sparrow Anki section and it reinforced a lot of the equations. I feel like for general chem and orgo chem, there are a lot of mechanisms that you need to know and the Anki reinforced it a lot. If you can find another type of review sheet, which I found one on Anki and I'll try to link it down below, that you can skim and write down the ones that you don't know. Again, it's just memorization. They're going to try to put it into a question in a passage and see if you know it and you just need to memorize it. So those are all my tips for like the actual sections, the easy ways to improve. What I wanted to say is every time that you get to a practice question and you see something you don't know, not only should you write it on that list, but you should put it in a flashcard service of some sort if you don't like Anki, use Quizlet, and reinforce what you just saw. Because think about how much stuff you see when you do practice questions and how quickly it gets to the back of your head and you're, you've already forgotten about it. So you need to find some way to reinforce, whether it's with Anki or flashcards, make sure you're taking screenshots of the page that you're taking questions on and putting it into a flashcard service. And then for the practice exams, I highly recommend getting the AMC full length exams that comes with six exams. What I would say is take the practice exam. It's gonna take like six to seven hours shut the computer, go about your day. The next two to three days, you have to review the exam. This is when it's fresh in your mind. This is when you remember why you put what you put. And then you need to take all the stuff that you didn't know and put it into a flashcard service, the paper that I talked about. You have to really thoroughly review every single question. So it's going to take double the time, if not triple the time that it took you to take it, because now we're looking at it in depth. So you have to plan out the next few days to review your exam. The way that I took the practice exams are FL1, then the unscored sample test, FL2, FL3, FL4, and then the scored sample test. That's the order that my friend told me to do, a lot of people on Reddit tell you to do. And then the unscored sample test, you can actually go into a calculator and score it, and I'll put that down below because it doesn't give you a score, so I will put that down below what website you can input each section score in and it'll give you a, a final score the last thing i wanted to say is to stay calm because you have to stay calm and optimistic throughout this whole thing it's all about endurance it's about keeping a positive attitude if you start to feel stressed and doubting yourself it will show in your score what i did is i romanticized the practice exam days like i would get my favorite drinks my favorite snacks i would set up a cozy space in the library or in my dorm and i would just make it an optimal study environment and so I would take all the breaks during my practice exams and I would just really look forward to each section, even if I ran out of time, even if I had no idea what I was looking at. So really stay calm, forget about each section after you take it and start new every section. Take that break to really calm yourself down. Also have a plan at the end of the night to look forward to so you can be excited to be done because it is really a mental exam. It's not just 
a knowledge-based exam, it's like, do you have the composure that it takes to do well even when you're doing bad? It kind of doesn't make sense, but that is really what it is. It's like, it is a test of endurance and attitude. That is all the tips that I have, and I know it wasn't super in-depth, but I will link down below every link that I talked about, and I will link down the U World prep course if you're interested in that. But I wanted to say good luck on all of your guys' studying. It will be over soon. You guys will do great. If you have questions, please leave them down below, and I can answer any of them, that I, or I can try to answer them. But thank you guys so much. Let me know how you guys do in your MCAT down below. I'd love to know, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!